Hey, it's Dara Sims, and today I want to talk to you about blues. Now, blues is something that's often overlooked by more experienced and technical players because it's deemed as easy because you can just play the minor pentatonic scale over a 12 bar blues progression. And that is true, but equally you can play the pentatonic scale over a rock progression doesn't mean you're restricted or confined to that. There's obviously a lot more potential. And I feel like in blues, there is even more potential than you can achieve with rock because there are so many different flavors. So with that said, I wanna spend the next few lessons talking about blues, both rhythm and lead playing. And not only will you be able to take away some blues licks and ideas, you'll also be able to strategically choose which notes you wanna play across the fretboard in relation to the chord that is being played. In today's lesson, I wanna go through with you some different rhythm ideas and chord voicings that you can implement into your blues playing. So sit tight, stay tuned, I'm gonna grab a guitar. Alrighty, let's begin by doing a kind of Chuck Berry style rhythm just to get you familiar with the groove that we're gonna be working with in this lesson. I'm gonna do a typical blues progression, a one, four, five kind of thing in the key of A. So that would be A, a D, and E. Here goes. So it's a very simple idea for you to try. I just encourage that you really nail that strumming, get that kind of swing feel in there. And what I'm doing with the power chords is sort of extending from that fifth to the sixth and then stretching right up to that flat seven there. And you can obviously do that with all of the power chords as long as you're highlighting specifically the first, fourth, and fifth intervals. If you're not so sure on how to find your one, four, and five chords, just use the major scale to your advantage by taking the root note, which is A in this case, and we're gonna count to the fourth interval. One, two, three, four. So that would be your fourth chord. And then the next note is obviously your fifth. And it's also very important that you're very confident finding the one, four, and five with the root on both the E string and the A string. Now let's expand on this idea with some dominant seventh chords. You can use minor sevenths or major seventh chords over this progression, but quite often dominant sevenths are used because they have more color and therefore more potential for note choices across the neck. So this is your dominant seven chord with the root on the E string. And this is your dominant seven chord with the root on the A string. Try and become familiar with the intervals of these chords. It's very important with all of the chords that I'm gonna show you today. I want you to become familiar with not just the shapes, but also the intervals within the chord. So a dominant seven chord consists of the notes one, three, five, and flat seven. So we can take a look at that with each of these shapes. So we've obviously got the root, the fifth, this note is your flat seven, and then this note is your third. And if you didn't know that, once again, just use your major scale to count up to the notes. So you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we had a flat seven, if you remember, so that's why you would bring that note down. And then this note, your third, is just up an octave from the first third that you will encounter. So let's play that one, four, five progression again with those chord shapes in mind. Notice that with some of the chords I slide into them or play the same chord shape, but just kind of one fret down, which technically is wrong, but it's great as a kind of passing chord if you're just changing into a new chord. Now let's expand on that pattern by changing the finger in a bit, including the minor third and also including a kind of suspended shape. So check this out.
So as you can see, I'm wrapping my thumb around the top to give my fingers some more exposure for different chord voicings. So I start off with the thumb on the root this time, and then I've kind of got my finger bar in the D, G, and B strings with the second finger hammering on to that major third on the G string. So we've got a kind of minor seven shape, and then a hammer on that major third, which gives me that dominant seven feel. And then on top of that, I'm also barring with the third finger here, with that thumb on the root, and that gives me a sort of D major triad shape, but with the A on the root. Except in the context of this piece, it's actually more of a suspended voicing because we've got the root, root, four, and six. So played slowly, we have. So you can see it's really all about keeping that picking hand going and keeping that swing in there. So even without the pattern, you've got this constant. That's the most important thing that's gonna keep you going throughout this progression. So just like I did then, leave some space for you to think. If you're struggling with some of the chord shapes, just keep that rhythm going. Now so far that should give you a solid foundation for playing blues, but for those of you who found that relatively easy so far, I've got some really cool extended chord shapes to share with you. Now the first one I wanna show you is a nine. It looks like this. Now you may associate that shape with a minor seven flat five. That's because it is except in the context of this piece that's actually a nine. If you work out the intervals, we've got our third, our flat seven, our nine, and then our fifth. And the cool thing about this chord is that if you take off the root, you can slide that shape up two frets. So check this out. Another useful nine shape starts with the root note on the A string, so if we take the four chord, which is D7, we can change that to this, which gives us a D9. And you can do that similar sort of slide thing with that bar at the bottom. So again. The 13 is another cool one. It's very similar to our original dominant seven shape. We just add one finger. So if we put our thumb on the root there and form our dominant seven, and then add that little finger on the seven of the B string. That's our 13th interval, and we can actually bar that little finger onto the E string too if we want to include the nine. Sounds pretty cool, and all of these shapes are obviously movable to the one, four, and five chords. That's why earlier we learned them on the E and the A strings, so that you can move any of these shapes across to whatever chord you're playing. The next shape I wanna show you is really cool. It's still a 13. We're gonna move these three notes to the A string, and then our root note is actually gonna be on the B string. Same chord, just a different voicing. Sounds really cool. And there's one more chord that I want to show you, and that's a seven sharp nine, which is a great chord to use at the end of the 12 bar blues to create a lot of tension. It sounds like this, which is very similar to your nine, except we're just using that little finger and barring the bottom two strings. And we can also play that seven sharp nine on the top string. If we grab the five here and we play a sort of 13, but if we put that little finger again at the bottom two strings, that gives us our sharp nine. So that's all the chord voicings that I wanna share with you. Don't just study the shapes and memorize them. I want you to also be very conscious and aware of all the intervals within those shapes. So you need to know where the 13 is, where the nine is, the seven, the five, all of those intervals and be confident that you can find them very quickly because interval awareness is gonna help massively with your chord extensions and later on your lead improvisation. Now, once you've got all that down, you should be able to have great fun on your own. Even without a backing track, you can kind of improvise some of these chords together. Let's give that a go now and give you a kind of idea of what you can achieve with this.
So key points to remember throughout this is definitely keep that strumming hand going. You don't want to stop that. Give yourself some room if you need some time to think about what's coming next by just keeping that percussive thing going and just kind of experiment with all of the different shapes that I've given you. And if you don't want to play in the key of A, that's cool. Just move everything up or down the fretboard to a different key. Just remember the one, four and five chord on both the E and the A strings. There we go, that's the end of the video. I hope you took away a bunch of cool ideas from this. If you wanna download the transcript for this, as well as a tab which reflects some of the chord voicings that we talked about in today's lesson, then check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description below. And make sure you stay tuned for the next video where I talk about how to play lead over a blues progression. Until then, enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.